I have a weird way of handling death. I kind of just draw into my shell and just shut everything out. Just give him a nice big slap on the chest there, Kurt. Just let him to take a breath. I don't show much emotion. I go and deal with it on my own. I'm a very private kind of individual. I like to mourn privately. Basically a year ago we performed a dental surgery on Aslan, the white lion, and uh, we gave him his bite back. And we saw that it actually made a huge difference in Aslan's life. And so over the last uh, year I've really been looking into all the animals' mouths. That's enabled me to actually ascertain which animals are in desperate need of surgery, which are need a checkup, and which animals I'm not really that sure of. We're here at the place where it's actually all going to take place. It's our little operating theatre. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice to meet you. Good. 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 So this week we have got a number of animals that we need to look at, but we also have a good team that we've assembled. You always plan to try to do everything you can in one go, uh, because you cannot catch, immobilize, trap those animals too often. A, it's, it's work intensive, B, it's not good for them. We said, okay, we've got several lions here. Most likely will have broken teeth and they can be whether root canal or extracted. So the packing uh, that we brought with us was exactly that. A lot of equipment for doing root canals of different sizes for extractions. Uh, Dr. Steenkamp had some ideas and one of those was to duplicate the, the theatre, have two tables. As the one goes down, gets stable, then we can go and fetch another. So we get normally one case that's quite bad and one that I think is not so bad. We split the week up into doing lions first, and then the leopards and the hyenas. Always a little bit of anticipation, a bit of nervousness on the first day, no matter how many sort of lions or animals you've anaesthetized before, there's always a bit of nerves that go, and I think that's quite a good thing, you know, just getting us started. Once we get going, I think everything will ease and we'll relax a lot more. When we did Aslan, that opened up everyone's eyes to the importance of dental health care because one of the comments that stuck with me was one that Gerard made, Dr. Steenkamp. He said to me, just think about a human who has uh, chronic tooth pain. Then They're not pleasant to be around. And so just imagine these animals. Sure, they've got a higher pain threshold. Sure, they learn to cope with it. But nevertheless, if we've got the ability to make their lives better by fixing their teeth, why not? Okay, so we don't obviously need everyone and sundry to go up there. Yeah. Uh, you don't need to come. So it'll be, the team will stay here and the team that needs to go will bring them here. No, he's just going to go around because it's going to be very difficult for him to dart through the solid door. Yeah. Okay. Go. Okay, Adrian. Just come back. Come back, come back, come back. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, boy. Why is this uh, such a grumpy old guy? Some lines are grumpy, some lines aren't. Eh? I don't know, it's Gandalf. <laughs> what can I say? His brother's Aslan, that should explain it. <laughs> they were born grumpy. When we look at the difficulties we're going to face in the week, I think one of the big things is the lines are very heavy. 
so it's labor intensive. So just to dart a lion and move a lion and get it to the operating table is really hectic. Then obviously then the next problem is, is the, the dentition. And these animals have huge teeth. So we've placed the tube right into his trachea, into his windpipe. And through this now we will be able to administer the oxygen and the gas anesthetic. It is only the lions that seem to be uh, damaging their teeth. The lionesses, on the other hand, seem to be a lot more careful about what they bite. Is this one you're taking out? One or two? Yeah. In yeah, captivity, the males uh, express their frustration by biting things. Um, and that could be, you know, just because it's feeding time or because they're irritated. Maybe they smell estrus in the air. The male lions that we are doing really are the ones that have a high level of testosterone and are pretty aggressive when, when, when the need be. Okay. I'm going to laugh at this lion's head here. I don't think he's skin at the back. Good. 90. Yeah. Okay. Alright, come on. Okay. Off the ground. 201.75. 201.35. Okay, 201. There's one, one premolar that uh, we should look at. Okay, then maybe we do that one first. Yeah, right? so we should do this one first and then we can do all the rest because okay. he says what we can do from the other side. So out of all the lions, there's always a lion that's special. Bobcat's one of those lions. I've known him since he was a tiny little cub and he's always had this really exuberant personality. He had a broken canine. Yeah, let's see what entails to fix it. But he's a really important cat. I've got a really special relationship with him. Almost there. I don't go to the gym, I just extract teeth. <laughs> I hope that this uh, procedure gives him a better quality of life. Long day, uh, only managed to do three lines today because we had a bit of a late start but it was fine because we had to actually just find our feet and decide on the direction forward. It's been a good day because they've had some complex work to be done. Tomorrow it is three lines, so yeah, so far so good. special lion. His name is Tao. He's coming on 18 years of age, so he is elderly. Um, and obviously the, the hot weather that we had yesterday wouldn't do him any good. So very thankful for the cool weather and very happy to see um, Tao really get his, his bite back. Hopefully going to find Tao. He's in the big enclosure now, so found him first and he's quite old, so whether or not he can still jump in the back is another question. Tao is the first lion that I ever uh, developed a relationship with. Hello, big boy. It started all oh. back in 1998, uh, when I was just 22, coming on 23 years of age. And that's really all my career with lions kick-started. So my relationship with Tao has been incredible. It's gone through a full cycle. He's now an old man. He's amazing. I mean, Tao hasn't loaded for about two years. I have left him, you know, I just walk him because it's easier. I love my boy. It's easier on the girls. Um, so incredible. Really proud of him. Oh. 
there's, there's several complications um, that one can you know um, expect when working with an older animal uh, you know they're not as resilient as, as the younger cats so we are a bit concerned that when you put him under that uh, there could be um, breathing problems or heart problems or you know any all sorts of kinds of kinds of problems the one thing that makes me more nervous than anything is those things I can't control and that would be part of the anesthetics that, that makes you humble. Yeah, we can feel the hot breath coming out. I mean the worst thing that can always happen is losing an animal and an anesthetic or you know something going wrong like that. Um, that. That would be absolutely a disaster but fortunately you know those kinds of cases really really are few and far between. We've done this a few times and um, so you just got to trust yourself and, and the experience that you have. There's always the, the trade-off as to what do you do. Do you not put him under anaesthetic and um, leave him with bad teeth or do you, you know, take the risk and uh, give him a better quality? He's old now, you can Pure see his muscle nine. tone is you not as good as it used to be. You can see he's very thin, the ribs are showing. A little bit of gut. Two or six, worn, like attrition. Can you just stop breathing? Oh, that's still okay, yeah? His heart rate is 48. Yeah. Give him a nice big slap on the chest there, Coach. Just get him to take a breath. I was lost for words really, I thought to myself, is this it? Is this how I say goodbye? It's not a very nice way. It's not how you'd imagine it after a 18 year relationship or so. We just had a, a moment there where, just as I was about to connect him up to the oxygen, he just stopped breathing for a lot longer than what I would be comfortable with. I mean, being an older lion, he can't afford to go without oxygen for a period of time, yes, for a long period of time, than anything that's necessary. So I've actually given him an antidote now, which does mean that he might become quite light. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Right. No, good. <laughs> all all, all, all is well with the answer. Yeah. It's a bit of a scare. Always going through your head. Three or eight's got a UCF. Preparation. I wouldn't hang around. You know, get done what needs to be done. That makes one start to reflect on how vulnerable these situations can be, how vulnerable these animals can be in your hands. This big, powerful king of the jungle. And like that, he's flat on his back, clinging on. Um, to laugh. Open two canals, so I'm working on both at the same time, and I think we're ready to uh, dry them up and start to pack. So the filing is done. Definitely a lot more wear than we had from the one yesterday. Uh, the 11 year old were much better dental wise than this guy. But he's also a great grandfather. Once you have a fracture of a tooth, the most important bit is the pulp on the inside. Now if you see the white bit there, that is the enamel, and then all of this is root. And when a tooth breaks and this gets exposed, then the infection will set in, it will kill all of this, and eventually it will even go through where those blood vessels are going, and causing inflammation or infection in the bone surrounding this. So our aim this week is to remove all of this, get to healthy dentine, fill it with cement, the pink gutta perka, and then do a final restoration on the car. Oh my boy. Oh my boy. Not very graceful. I think that whole adrenaline kind of rush, that emotional drain, the rest of the day I was just mentally and physically exhausted. I'm obviously happy to have a towel back. A bit of a stressful day, a bit of an emotional day. Glad it's over.
It's nice to be at the, the tail end knowing that everything's gone so well. We're good to have a look and see how Aslan's doing. With Aslan we get to kind of see how things have progressed over a much longer period of time and um, hopefully you know he's still been pain free over the last you know year and um, that whatever we did then had a dramatic effect on him. Ten out of ten, eh? For sure, yeah. shooting. I take back what I said. <laughs> you are the anaesthetizer. <laughs> Do you see? Are you happy? I'm very happy, Kevin. If you have a look here, sizes are still fine, and all of this is healed beautifully. And there's it's just like solid, eh? Yeah. No oh. holes, no draining tracts, nothing. All the teeth that were done in December 2014 are looking Good. amazing. It's absolutely incredible. There's no chipping away or the filling coming out or anything like that. But for me, the most incredible thing is the one that was extracted fully and all the bone has just come back. Dr. Stienkamp noticed that one of the incisors was not good. He just needed to remove the crown, put a couple of stitches. That sounds good to go. much finished with Iceland uh, but what's happening is we've got a pretty nasty storm coming and we don't particularly want to be taking Iceland back on the back of the bucky in the rain so we're just trying to get these claws done here it's just quite uh, puffy and smelly eh? mm, getting all kinds of greasy discharge stuck in there hey Okay, so the, rain, the rain's really chucking it down now and we've just got Aslan back. So, pretty chuffed about that. Yeah, Aslan is okay. He's busy recovering. As soon as he pops his head up, we're going to close the door and we're going to be off.